Alright guys, welcome to another Catch and Cook. On the menu today is a sea robin filet, butter roasted over a very quick corn relish. Here I'm using the 5 inch shad impact and I did catch quite a few fluke on this but that's another video. And yeah, every year these robins seems to grow in size and numbers. So I know most of you will catch probably dozens of these over the course of the season. And we're going to show you how to prep these. And I still haven't found a 100% reliable way to bleed these out. So usually I, I rake across their gills instead of poking them under the membrane like I do with Fluke. And the results are 50-50. Anyway, I'm going to switch to a live audio during the cooking process. So I hope you enjoy. Alright. These are apparently... The average size robins <coughs> we're catching in the bay now. Pretty so, big. Yeah. Alright. So we've done this before, but. Alright, so. Edge of the board, and you start at the base of the second dorsal fin. Uh, we'll cut all the way to the head. Flip. All right. Now you want to break the backbone, but only the backbone. Now. Oh my God. What happened there? Okay. You grab this nub. Nub of the backbone, you press it down onto the board. Pull. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's okay. This, you just pull off. I remember <clears throat> you weren't successful the first time either. I wasn't, right? Yeah. But. This was a bigger fail than the first time. This is, I mean, it broke at a bad spot. <laughs> yeah, it did. I remember doing this once before. Nailed it on the first try. <laughs> and now, <laughs> god damn it. That's close enough. Alright. Look at all of this. Dude, we should eat this. Look at that. Clickbait. I mean, it looks good. Yep. Should eat it right now. Yeah, eat it raw. Yep. Yeah. In the marsh. We're actually going to fillet the tail. And very simple. Go down each side of the backbone. Okay, turn it over. Do the same thing. See, I'm, I'm going down until I hit the center of the backbone. Right. And you just cut until you get to the top of the ribs. So are there other ways to fillet uh, a robin without taking its head off? I mean, there is, but this way you get the highest yield. Oh, okay. You know. There's some pin bones here. Okay. Just one fillet. Do the same thing on this side. You know, I'm, I'm really bending the knife so that it goes over the top of the rib bones. Okay. And there's your, you know, the bones are all along there. 
And this is great for soup. This along with the head, but. So you do it this way, you don't even have to rinse it. It's just, everything's nice and clean. Roll it up. That's it. And we'll prep the rest of your ingredients. Corn, I husk down to the last, uh, you know, the last layer, pulled all the silk out, and then soaked it in water for maybe 10 minutes. You don't have to do this, but this grill is kind of weird. This is the hot zone. Yeah. There. All right, so that's like, eh. Maybe three and a half minutes total. I can smell that husk kind of burning. All right. Pour it out and then we'll cut these to make our relish. All right, so the corn relish, very simple. There's the corn that we grilled, some green onion, red onion, a couple of tomatoes that we're gonna concasse. Here we're gonna slice Thin bias, relatively thin. You want everything roughly the same size as the corn kernels. Sharpen this knife. All right, now the tomatoes, I have a ice water bath that's ready here. And all you wanna do is Make a little cross on the bottom. Just through the skin. All right, just like that. You have a pot of boiling water. Goes in about 20 seconds, then into the ice bath. All right. See the skin's already coming off. All right, that's it. These will just hang out while we cut the corn. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, I know a lot of people, they like to stand it like this and cut. I would recommend you at least, you know, squaring off the bottom if you do that. I just cut it from here. You need a sharp knife. And you start at the heel of your knife. And you're not just pushing, you know? Don't just push, slice. Okay, start at the heel all the way to the tip. Don't cut too deep. You don't want the pith. And to me, this is just easier, it's less messy, and frankly, safer. And for this, you do need a sharp knife. I mean, this is a kind of thing where a dull knife is a lot more dangerous than a sharp knife. All right, that looks pretty good. That one we'll just eat. The term for this is concasse. It just means diced up, seedless, and skinless tomatoes. Okay, slice, tip of your knife, you don't want the seeds. All right, uh, so that's basically what you're left with, just these tomato petals. In some recipes, you're just using that. And that's basically it. Dice all this up, add it, and then that's that. Okay. When the juice, I don't know, at least half the slime. And this is how you get the most juice out of uh, most citrus. Okay. One, I went through. 
three quarter line. Extra virgin olive oil. Not too much, but. Gonna round out that acid. And salt. salt. Lots of salt. So it really is a balance between the acid and the salt. Kind of like a ceviche. My favorite type of salad. This will marinate. And at the last second, we'll add our basil and mint. All right, so we're going to butter roast this, which means we don't need very high heat. Some olive oil, big knob of butter, and once it starts foaming, we can put the fish in. You know, if this is a steak, you want to salt like here and put a thick layer on. But thin fillets this fish up high so the crystals can separate. So the flesh side is the presentation side. That's the side that goes down first. You see the butter is gonna brown it, even though we're not using maximum mm -hmm. heat. If it gets too hot, just move it off the heat. Here, just gonna face it a little bit. Ooh. Rusty. That's pretty much it. You can touch it, you know, if it feels pretty firm, you're done. Don't do it. Stay one piece. All right. All right, so this stuff you want to do last second because you don't want these uh, herbs to oxidize on you. Make like a little deck. Hold them. And you just slice, right? Chiffon on. Turn it once you get to the rib. Pretty rough chiffon on here. Okay, all the mint leaves are stacked. Throw it up. All right. I sm oh, I smell it now. Yeah. I was overwhelmed by the basil before. Maybe. That that Thai basil is no, no joke. It's not basil, it's basil. 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 Shallots. 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 Scallops. Middle <laughs> <laughs> okay. of the plate. A little chiffonade on top. Okay. And the fish. It's like a it's like a nineties dish. Look at that. Some height. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little acid on the fish. Not too much. A little olive oil. Alright. That's it. That's a dish. Nice. Alright, why don't you flake in a little? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it's a juicy fish. Oh it's yeah. It's a firm white fish. Alright. Some special rare tembe. Well, let's not let's not spot burn here. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, some yeah. New Jersey sea robin. Right.
It's really good. Oh, focus. Not bad. I'm telling you, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a great good fish. It's a twenty dollar entree right here. There you the go. Hamptons. Gernard. Gernard. Okay, Gernard, which is the other name for sea robin. And they are considered a delicacy for good reason across Europe. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And I don't think that is the last sea robin dish on my channel this year. So, in any case, thank you for watching and stay tuned.